Welcome back to the 9mm Ammo Quest, where I am trying extensively to find the best performing ammunition for a 9mm pocket pistol, as defined by me as having a 3-inch barrel. These are the smallest 9mm that are in general use, very popular, but we need to find ammo that performs great from them. What do I consider great performing ammo? Ammo that will expand reliably and penetrate deeply enough to hit and disrupt the vital organs of any attacker that you may be called upon to use this pistol against. So we're using the standards developed at the 1987 Wound Ballistic Conference where the FBI convened a bunch of experts and said, find out what makes ammo effective. And their findings boil down really quickly is the bullet's got to have enough energy and enough ability to penetrate at least 12 inches through ballistic gel and no more than 18 inches and it's got to be able to expand reliably if it does those things and you put the bullet where it belongs it will have enough energy and ability to get through a body punch through bones punch through intervening arms if someone's pointing a gun at you and it blocks their vital organs the bullet will have enough energy to be able to get through those arms because you don't get to choose your shooting scenario you know people are not going to stand there and say okay let's have a duel it's your turn you shoot at me okay now it's my turn i'll shoot that doesn't happen you know, you don't know what your shooting scenario is going to be. You don't know if people are moving or ducking or laying down or if they're shooting from above you or below you or what. You don't know. So you need a bullet that performs in all scenarios. And that's what these uh, guidelines from the Wound Ballistic Conferences were designed to find. So we're holding bullets to that standard. And that may sound stringent but i've already found in my quest many bullets that will meet that standard so i got no room for bullets that don't um if it doesn't perform well enough we just kick it out because hey you can buy stuff that will perform so we're looking for the best today's candidate hpr hyper clean this is a 115 grain hornady xtp round now in my 380 ammo quest the HPRs were a fantastic performer, and the XTP was really the best bullet for a 380. Uh, in the 9mm, I've tested the Hornady uh, Custom lineup in several weights of, of uh, XTP, and they really haven't done all that well. And I tested uh, Precision 1 in the 147 grain XTP, and it didn't do all that well. But this is 115 grain. It's a different class. How will it do? Let's find out. We're going to put it through genuine, professional ballistic gelatin. Same stuff the FBI uses, prepared in the same way that they do it, shot in the same uh, conditions that they use. And we're going to use four layers of FBI or IWBA specification heavy denim, which represents a worst case scenario. This is not a realistic clothing scenario. This is a worst case scenario. If it can get through this and still perform properly, then it should perform properly through any clothing scenario that any rational person would likely be wearing. So let's get to the range and find out how these 115 grain HPRs do. So the bear gel, the HPRs look like they penetrated pretty decently, but we do have some cases of substantial bounce back here. So we're gonna have to correct for those what that means is the bullets bounced backwards through the gel. You can actually see in the slow motion footage where they penetrated deeper and then bounced back. And so using the resting spot is not fair to them. We have to put them where they really belong. And we use the Charles Schwartz quantitative ammunition selection mathematical formula to compensate for the bounce back and put the bullets where they belong. And when we do that, we find that the penetration is really deep. The shortest bullet came in at 17 inches. Then we have two at 17 and a quarter, one at 18, and the furthest bullet went to 18 and a quarter inches. Now, technically that would be, you know, a tinge of over penetration, but not too concerned about it because four out of the five did not exceed the limit. The one that did was just barely. So, you know, we'll remember that one of them went over and we'll factor that in at the end, but I don't think this disqualifies it from running the denim test. So we're gonna go ahead and run that now. through the denim, we got penetration that's uh, similar or actually even a little deeper than what we had through the bear gel. We've got the shortest bullet stopped at 16 and a half, 
We had one that went to 17 and a quarter. Then we had one at 18. And then we had two that did over penetrate. We got one at 18 and a half and one at 18 and three quarters. So that means that in general, three out of the 10 bullets exceeded 18 inches. Uh, and if we count the two that stopped at 18 inches, we actually had half the bullets ended up at or beyond the very upper limit. That's not that confidence inspiring. It's not a disaster, but it is uh, at the bare limits or, or over the limits of what we would like to see. Not impressive. Um, they did all sort of expand, but these are all the bare bullets. And in every one of them, in their journey through the gel, they broke off and left pieces behind. Uh, shedding weight is never good. It doesn't contribute to wounding at all. It just leaves pieces in the existing damage track. And so what you want, you want the pieces to stay attached like on this bullet so that they make effectively the overall diameter bigger. So on this bullet, for example, we have a couple of pieces that did not break off. And so they stick out further and they add to the wounding as the bullet travels. But on all these, pretty much all the extended pieces just broke off. And so we end up with a, a very small bullet. And that's, that's one reason why even at the light weight, we still got very deep penetration out of them. And then for the denim, uh, just a mess. We just got a mess there. We have uh, two of them that expanded well and decently, and then three that are very inconsistent. You know, even with that said, I gotta say that a bullet like this with these sharp, nasty petals, that's gonna cut some flesh. And that's gonna cause some wounding. Definitely much more wounding gonna come from something like this than would from something like this. But in general, I don't like bullets that are inconsistent. I like to know what I'm gonna get. I like to be able to count on it. And I'd like to count on it being good. So as I've shown in other examples, even though these did expand these two and these did make a nasty cutting profile, we could have had something like this. That's an HST. And look just how much bigger a round. We've got such a tiny little diameter here compared to this massive piece. When we have choices like this available, it makes it difficult to understand why we would settle for something that performs like that. And for those reasons, that's why I'm not impressed with the 115 grain XTP from this load. Okay, we got our answer on the HPR, and the answer is, I wouldn't recommend it. Keep looking. Not a disastrous performance. It's okay, but the bullets did not expand consistently. Uh, they didn't give me a lot of confidence that these would be, you know, a good, solid, reliable performer. And when they did expand, they're tiny. Uh, I mean, they expand. If we had gotten these results on the 380. I'd be okay with it, but in the 9mm, we found performers already that were just simply fantastic. So to me, there's just no reason to settle for mediocre or, or okay. Why settle for that when you could spend your money and get bullets to perform incredibly? So I do have to say thank you to the viewer of my videos who donated this ammo. I very much appreciate it. We're glad that we had a chance to test it, and I thank you for your generosity in uh, sending ammo to me to test. Um, I would say, though, that there's better choices out there, so definitely uh, look at my other videos for a better choice, or stay tuned, hit subscribe, and keep watching, because we have lots more tests that we're going to be conducting. Thanks for watching.